Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new and welcome to my new kitchen. Isn't it gorgeous? This kitchen, I'm still at that state where I just like look and just like, I can't believe you're mine. Ah, it's just so gorgeous. I love this kitchen so incredibly much. Anyways, today we are doing more crock pot dump and go dinner recipes. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. You guys really, really love my crock pot videos. So I'm going to keep them coming. I have a playlist, by the way, it's in the description box. And then I also will pin a comment. So if you guys want to go check out more, I've done a breakfast video at this point. I've done a dessert video and I also have tons of dinner crock pot recipes. Super easy, super quick. Just, I love the crock pot. I love it. We, we have become besties over the past several months and you guys are loving these videos so as long as you guys are watching I'm going to keep making them so put your recipe ideas in the description box and I'm going to work I'm going to get to working on a subscriber potluck maybe should we should we call it that subscriber potluck where you guys tell me your recipes I will make them and then I will also give you guys a shout out I will be like oh so and so this is so and so's recipe and I'll also like link your comment or whatever so, so yeah, let me know. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's Miss Green Eyes fifteen sixteen. And whatever you guys make, that is uh, any of any of my any of the meals that you see in my videos. Tag me on Instagram. Tag me in your stories, and I will be sure to repost your story on my story as well. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this dump and go crock pot dinner recipes these are so delicious you guys are gonna love they're not the most healthiest in the world but let's just get to it for our first dump and go crock pot meal it's super simple super quick and we have five simple ingredients so first you're gonna want a pound of kielbasa sausage i personally use turkey sausage and i just kind of cut it up into like little circles i also did a couple of uh, half moons. I also here have a um, block of cream cheese. This is the kind of cream cheese that I use. It's the, I don't know what that pronunciation is, but it's a third less fat than regular cream cheese. And I actually prefer the taste of this than regular cream cheese. We're going to need four cups of chicken broth. I always get the reduced sodium. We're going to need two 24 ounce bags of pierogies and they are the classic cheddar pierogies and then we're going to need eight ounces of any kind of shredded cheese so literally just dump go this doesn't even take that long to cook on low you can put it and have it done in four hours you can put it on high and have it done in two hours so this is super quick and super easy by the way number one i took your guys a suggestion on cubing up the cream cheese so thank you for that and number two, a lot of you question about like whenever I have bags of stuff um, that comes out of the freezer section, if I thaw it out beforehand, like meatballs, veggies, or anything like that, no. These are frozen just out of the freezer, so I do not thaw anything out. So let's go ahead and get all of this dumped into the crock pot. So this meal was definitely the least favorite of mine and the kids. It had all of my, not favorite ingredients, but everything that was put in here, I love. I love pierogies. I love cheese. I love cream cheese. I love, uh, I mean, chicken broth. It's like, you know, whatever. I don't love it, but you know, it's a basic ingredient used in a lot of things. Um, and I also love sausage, but this together was just not good. I think the sausage would have been better had it been browned prior to being put in the crock pot. I didn't like the texture of that. And the texture of the pierogies wasn't bad. It was more like a dumpling, but it just wasn't my favorite. So if you like these ingredients, maybe something like this would be better baked um, versus in a crock pot. 
But yeah, this was definitely our least favorite of this whole video that we tried. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This looks so good. This has been on um, low for like several hours, by the way. Or no, keep warm. Um, but it looks really, really, really good. It smells really good. So we're excited. Yes? Hold on, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, yeah, I mean, it's not gonna look like much on the plate. I totally served this with a salad on the side, but we are moving in three days, so I really don't have many vegetables in there, but that's what this looks like. And I will give you a review of what it tastes like at the end of the video. I am so incredibly excited about this crock pot recipe. It is a taco Doritos casserole. So what you're gonna need is one pound of ground beef. I already have mine ground up and I freeze them in individual one pound servings. You're gonna need a packet of taco seasoning, a half a cup of water, a can of cheddar cheese, I guess this is soup, a can of refried beans, a can of black beans drained and rinsed, you're gonna need, the recipe calls for two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. I have this um, Fiesta blend. It is a reduced fat cheese and it's one and three quarter cups. So I'm just gonna use that. And then a bag of Doritos. The recipe calls for you to top the, top the casserole with the Doritos, but I'm gonna to top the Doritos on each individual serving. This also only cooks on low for like four hours and on high for two hours. So this is a great meal if you're in a hurry and you want something quick. Maybe you have a potluck coming up or something. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and dump everything into here because we wanna mix all of these things together first. Then we're gonna mix our meat, taco seasoning, and water, which I'm actually gonna do that on the stove, but you do you. You can go ahead and add that in here and not have to worry about that. So we can truly make it a dump and go. Um, and then we're gonna top it with some cheese and turn it on low for two, no, four hours. And let's just do this. So make sure you are draining and then rinsing your beans off whenever they come in the can. Um, it's very important that you do so. Um, I also wanted to mention that this meal was insanely delicious definitely definitely going to become a family favorite by the way make sure you get all that cheese out of that can girl because we don't want to waste any of these ingredients this does not look the most appetizing whatsoever but it came together so quickly so easily and oh my gosh my kids and i loved this meal this is definitely something that would be great to bring to um, someone's house is like I don't know, this could be like a really good appetizer too. Like if you're doing appetizers or some, I don't know. This was just so insanely delicious and I highly, highly, highly recommend. I also recommend that you do the Doritos to each individual serving. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. It doesn't look the prettiest. I will admit that, but oh my gosh, it smells delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut this into like six servings. I would say, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. I'm just going to kind of eyeball. And there is our delicious Doritos taco casserole. I am so excited to go eat this. Stay tuned to the end so you can get my full final review on this, but I'm thinking it's gonna be a complete winner. Tonight we are making a tater tot casserole. I've seen something similar to this in the oven going around YouTube and I've never tried it before. I don't know if this is the same ingredients, but what you're gonna need for this one, it's gonna go in the crock pot and fingers crossed that the potatoes aren't gonna be like all mushy and stuff, but we've got one 32 ounce bag of tater tots, a can of cheddar cheese soup, one packet of taco seasoning. Here we go with the Fiesta blend cheese again. We got one and three quarter cups. Um, the recipe calls for two. I'm just gonna use the one and three quarter. And then we have one pound of ground beef. Yes, this has been pre-browned and then frozen. 
So we're just gonna dump everything in here, mix it together, and put it on low for four to five hours or high for two to three hours. And fingers crossed, this one turns out amazing. Y'all, we can uncross our fingers because this came out delicious. This is definitely another family favorite. The hat, no, what are they called? Tater tots. The tater tots did not come um, out all soggy. They were like, the ones on the edges were kind of crispy. They were just perfect. And that was my biggest concern was that the tater tots were going to be all soggy and gross, but they weren't. They were so delicious. And this is yet another recipe that I highly, highly, highly recommend. It has been four hours. This is what it looks like. Um, trying to see. The tater tots are definitely, they're browned. It is, oh, do you guys see this? Oh my gosh, like, hold on. You're not getting the whole cheese stretch. Anyways, so I do want to mention that the cheese, like the, the ingredients, you kind of do want to mix. Because you see... You have like the cheese soup just kind of sitting there, but this is delicious. The tater tots on the bottom and around the side, they are actually crispy. This is what it looks like. I'm about to go enjoy the heck out of this. And yum, look at that. This meal is super simple with very limited ingredients. All you're gonna need is some about two pounds of pork chops, four tablespoons of butter, some garlic, and then half a cup of chicken broth. You literally just put them all into the crock pot, let it cook for only three hours on low, and then you will have some delicious buttery, garlicky pork chops, which is what, th which is what this is, Gar garlic, butter, pork chops. So let's get started into dumping this into the crock pot. So this meal was okay. Um, I actually ended up cooking the pork chops a little longer than I should have. So mine turned out kind of um, dry and not tender. So definitely, when you're looking at the recipe, definitely go by what they say as far as time. Um, because I was just like, oh no, that's just like too short of a time. It's not going to be cooked. Girl, yes it is. It's going to be cooked. So whatever time it says on the recipe go by that because like I said, I overcooked them and they were dry. Had they not been dry, this would have been really super delicious. Um, but yeah, that's the only reason why I'm kind of like, uh, it was all right because mine just came out way too dry, but that was my fault. like after a few hours you can totally use this sauce to go over the pork chops um, or you can use it to go over rice which I'm going to cook while well, I'm cooking rice so I'm gonna serve this with some rice and some veggies and I'll show you what it looks like all plated up so this is plate rice with a little bit of the juice some peas and carrots and the pork chop so I also had an idea because I really love ranch like the powdered ranch dress of uh, powdered ranch seasoning um, I think that this would be really good with that too, but I wanted to leave that out because I've already done like a ranch pork chop recipe before, but I did want to mention that it would probably be really good with this as well. Okay, so tonight we are making Italian beef, which is low carb if you don't use the rolls and the provolone cheese that I'm going to use towards the end, but this crock pot part is low carb. So what you're going to need is three pounds of chuck roast, which I have right here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and add that into the bottom. It's actually two and a half pounds, but what else? <clears throat> this is a really simple four ingredient meal. So super excited about that. Come to think of it, I think all of these meals that I've been doing in this, all of the dinners in this video, I think have been like six, five, four ingredients or less. Like they've all been super simple to put together. So you go ahead and put your chuck roast in there. Then you're going to need one 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce. You're going to need half a cup of sliced pepperoncinis, 
half a cup of the pepperoncini juice, and then you're going to need half a cup of beef broth. So we're gonna go ahead and just throw that in there, cook it on low for eight to 10 hours, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. This recipe was delicious and something I highly, highly, highly recommend. No, the pepperoncinis did not make it spicy, so if you don't like spicy food, still try this. It is so, so incredibly delicious. Now I do go ahead because you have to get all the sauce out, so I do go ahead and add some water in there. I didn't add much, but I have to get all of the, the rest of the sauce, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that real quick. And then, like I said, put the top on it, cook this on low for eight to 10 hours until it's like nice and tender. Shred it, you can put it on buns, like toasted buns with provolone cheese, which is what I'm gonna do, or you can just eat this with some cauliflower rice. Um, if you're doing low carb, you can do zoodles. You can do just this. It looks delicious. Maybe some veggies on the side. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, it's been about nine hours. This is smelling delightful. Like it smells so good. <clears throat> I'm worried though. I'm like, I don't think the meat is going to be tender. And I was right. It's not very tender. Well, it is actually breaking apart nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead, break this apart, and then I'm gonna toast some rolls. Oh, I need to be careful. Actually, I need to take this out, duh. I just tasted what I had on my fork. It is incredibly flavorful, and it actually is incredibly tender, so. Mm -hmm. Try to get this out. But yeah, I'm gonna go toast some rolls after kind of breaking this apart. And put some provolone cheese on them. And that's what we're gonna have this on. So I'm gonna put this in the middle of the table so we can make our sandwiches over there. But I wanted to go ahead and show you. So we're just gonna like the bread's like all toasty with melty provolone. And then you just put the meat on there. Excuse the TV, it's like literally right there. I mean, you can put as much or as little meat as you want and then like you wanna get some little bit of sauce or whatever. But that is what we're looking like. And I'm telling you, this is so delicious. So highly recommend you guys try this. So I thought I recorded an outro to this, but I did not. But I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Please share it with your friends and your family or anyone you think um, would love these recipes. And you guys are amazing. I love you guys so much. Um, don't forget to comment down below your favorite crock pot recipe so I can feature you in my next crock pot meal or next crock pot dinner recipe video because the next dinner one that I'm going to do because I have another um, I have a breakfast one coming up but the next dinner one that I'm going to do is going to be all of your recipes so I'll get like five or six that I you know of your recipes down in the comments um, and I will make those so definitely don't forget to do that and of course I will also give you a shout out and say this is so and so's recipe um, so yeah love you guys thank you so much and I hope that you have an amazing day and are keeping safe through this craziness of the coronavirus um, and that I hope that I can be like a little bit of um an escape from what's going on, you know, in the real world. So love you guys. Have an amazing day. God bless. Stay safe. You guys are amazing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mwah.